Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today, we're going to take a look at Frank Lampard's Everton. We're going to look at his Chelsea team, tactically how they set up, and then apply it to the likes of Donny van der Beek and Deli Alley to exciting acquisitions for the Merseyside club. If you are new around here, please hit that subscribe button. Of course, check out SofaScore link in the description below. It's where we get all of our good statistics. Anyway... It's time to talk Chelsea. Frank Lampard, of course, started his career in management at Derby County, uh, getting to the playoffs with a team featuring the likes of uh, Tom Lawrence, Mason Mount and Tamore. Derby under Lampard were an attractive side. They finished in the playoffs playing a 4-4-2 diamond, but played most, most of that season in a 4-2-3-1. Fast forward to his time at Chelsea. Uh, his first game in charge as uh, Chelsea manager was a 4-0 defeat at Old Trafford to Manchester United. Lampard, though, sticking with the Tudor 4 2 3 1 that he mainly used at Derby County. Moving forward, Lampard used a number of different shapes at Chelsea. Of course, that 4 2 3 1 we've previously seen, and at times a back three shape three centre halves, four in midfield, and then two attacking midfielders off a central striker. That worked well against teams that played back threes, such as Wolverhampton Wanderers, and of course, in the massive game uh, in London against Tottenham Hotspur, beating them two goals to nil with a back three. So, tactically, let's have a look at Lampard's Chelsea, how they set up, how they lined up, uh, what were the key parts and key components of that side. So, of course, the 4-2-3-1 was probably the most prominent shape. We also saw, at times, a flat midfield three to get a little bit more control in those central areas. But mainly, it was the 4-2-3-1 with Mason Mount moving into a number 10 position. I think one of the problems with this Chelsea side was their lack of uh, shape and attack. What frequently happened with Chelsea is they'd throw far too many bodies forward. Both fullbacks, all the attacking midfielders, and at times, N'Golo Kante or Kovacic, whichever box-to-box -box midfielder played, which Jorginho or as a pairing together would get in. It left massive space in the channels for teams to counter-attack. This is a bit of a problem for Lampard's side. They conceded 54 goals in the Premier League in the 1920 season, which is more than any side in the top half managed to concede. And I think that was one of the big areas. For me, Chelsea actually looked a lot better under Lampard when they played a back three, when the likes of uh, Rudiger came into the side. And they had a little bit more... Um, width in their defensive shape so they they built with with more of a five um the two dms and the back three and then allowed the the front five to attack the two wing backs to attack the midfielders and the number 10 that for me was better in terms of obviously the key guys uh, under Frank Lampard, uh, Tammy Abraham scored 15 goals and registered three assists in the league. Uh, but the interesting side with that, a lot of those goals came in the first half of the season, um, which led to Lampard switching out and bringing in um, Olivier Giroud into the side. But in terms of Tammy Abraham, of course, playing as that centre point, that focal point, applying the, the, the finishing touches to moves, not really getting in, involved in the build-up, take his game against Wolverhampton Wanderers where he grabbed himself a hat-trick from four shots on goal, only made 11 passes in the game so not really involved pretty much uh, an advanced forward at the top of the line so that's kind of the the background on Frank Lampard's Chelsea of course they came fourth they had a transfer pan but they did of course bring in um Christian Pulisic and Kovacic uh, you know converted his loan to a permanent deal so there were two players that came in but of course couldn't uh you know go and spend loads of money but did bring through the likes of Tammy Abraham Tamore and of course Mason Mount that grabbed the assist um for the Havertz goal in the Champions League final so let's move forward to Everton Everton making some big acquisitions in January uh for Frank Lampard uh, including uh former Tottenham star Deli Alley uh, and of course, Donny van der Beek. The interesting side here is I'd statistically and profile them tactically as very similar players. Second strikers uh, that like to do their best work off uh, a centre forward. And I think that's where Dominic Calvert-Lewin in this, uh, in this uh, Lampard system is going to be a real asset because he's the type of player that can link the play really well with his back to goal. I think setting up Everton, it's a little bit of a problem right now. I think there's a few holes in the squad, of course, getting rid of Benitez, getting rid of the director of football. Lampard has got a lot of work to do. So let's take a look at the 4-2-3-1 that Lampard could use at Everton. Of course, one of his men, Deli Ali or Donny van der Beek, will come in at number 10. I think how Lampard has interacted and spoke with Deli Ali and said how important he wants him to be and he wants to wipe that slate clean. I think Deli Ali may start as the number 10. The issue I feel for Everton is Decore and Allen have arguably been their best part of their team this season. Decore's energy and box-to-box -box ability led him to be one of the uh, highest players in terms of goals plus assists in the first uh, few months of the season before his injury. And I thought his energy was absolutely fantastic. So, 
that means that maybe, you know, you've got to go with that double pairing in midfield. Does that push the likes of Deli Alley wide? You know, bring in um, Donny van der Beek into attack in midfield. Everton play 4 2 3 1 with Townsend on the right, Ben Godfrey, uh, Michaelenko, and then Mina and Keane at the back. Or alternatively, of course, we've still got Richarlison to get into the team as well. It's a little bit of a conundrum for Lampard. One system and shape that might work for Lampard, the only thing I could see the negatives here is potentially the, the width from fullback. Of course, Seamus Coleman could come back in, but selling Luca Dean to Aston Villa was a big, big mistake in my book because it could have allowed um, Tottenham to play a, a four to Diamond, allowing Decore to play as a box-to-box -box player. Uh, Donny van der Beek is a bit of a playmaker. Allen really shuttling the defence and throwing both fullbacks to provide the width in the final third. I think that could be an option. Alternatively, we could see... Um, a, you know, a shift to a back three, that could be an option for Frank Lampard's uh, Everton. I just feel like it's it's going to be an interesting tactical situation because Donny van der Beek has shown at times some brilliance for Manchester United. But if we look at the, the starts in the Premier League and the minutes that he's played, he's just not had enough time to really establish himself. I think some of the best games for Donny van der Beek at Manchester United uh, have come in a deeper midfield position, but it wasn't something that United frequently frequently tried uh, to alleviate. Um, you know, one of his best performances in uh, this season uh, was off the bench in the second half against Watford. It was absolutely fantastic in defensive midfield, created three uh, chances, got himself a goal, played a really good ball down the line for Marcus Rashford. And it's probably something that Manchester United fans want to see is Donny van der Beek in a midfield role, in a deeper midfield role in the Premier League to see whether he can do it. Of course, Donny made the headlines at Ajax as a number 10 with playmakers around him. Donny isn't a playmaker, isn't someone that's, that's going to you know drive the attack, that's going to create all the chances, but he's someone that moves so well off the ball uh, that can get into to areas combined with his teammates and score goals. I think for Deli Ali as well, it's kind of a similar thing in a sense of Bate played his best football at Tottenham Hotspur, um, you know, in a 4 2 3 1, but with creativity around him, um, you know, the team that was so dominant under Maurizio Pochettino featured um, Ali. And Eriksen in the in the same side. And Eriksen would be the playmaker of the side. Son would be the direct winger. Kane would be that focal point striker. And Deli Ali would either start in attacking midfield, as we see here in that central area, or uh, drift from that left-hand side into a, uh, into a striking position with Christian Eriksen running the show. That's what I feel, you know, Everton do miss someone like an Eriksen, someone to dictate the play. And I don't think Donny van der Beek or uh, Deli Ali have yet shown that quality, but I'm not saying that they couldn't do that because both are, you know, reasonably young players. Deli Ali still 25 years old and needs to get his career back on track. And of course, Donny, um, a very similar age or the same age at 24, but again, needs minutes and needs to play. There's been a times that we've seen for, for Ajax uh, and for Manchester United where he's excelled in central midfield, but it still reminds, remains a concern in my own mind, you know, which is his best position and so forth. Uh, one of his best displays uh, for Manchester United against Brighton in the FL Cup actually came at number 10 as that link man. That's what you're going to get from Donny van der Beek. Uh, the high pass accuracy, the link in the play, uh, the assists that are more of like the, the last pass of the move, not like the second assist pass that's going to split a defence. And I feel like, you know, Everton do need to to, to bring someone like that in January, to in January, sorry, in the summer uh, to really complete this side. So the option is a 4-4-2 diamond, maybe with Donny van der Beek in that Christian Eriksen role. Deli Alli is a second striker. Richarlison's that left-hand side. Calvert-Lewin to the right-hand side. That could be a good setup for Frank Lampard. It's a system that he switched to with Derby County uh, in the playoffs and did really well in that shape. Alternatively, we could see that 4-2-3-1 if that was going to be the case. Uh, and, for example... You know, someone like a Decore was dropped for an Iwobi. Donny playing in a deep position in 4-2-3-1. I can't see that happening, but that very much could be an option for Frank Lampard if he wants to stick to his favoured shape. It's going to be a really interesting spell for Frank Lampard. He's got a lot of work to do with this Everton team. They are in uh, free footfall at the moment. And if we look at the, the league, they are, you know, it's a little bit of a worry for them in terms of their positioning. And they really need to hit, hit some form going forward because... You know, you've always got to look over your shoulder and that's something that Everton will do. They will get pulled into a relegation battle if they don't start fast under Frank Lampard. So I think tactically Lampard may need to... Um uh, may need to evolve his game as well. The thing I mentioned before about the space uh, in that fullback area was exploited frequently at the back end of his, um, his Chelsea career. 
by lots of different opponents that basically played an attacking midfielder um, and split strikers. Uh, it was a few games where it kind of happened in that run. Chelsea's game at Manchester United went to Stamford Bridge, played a 3-4-1-2 and just hit the space in behind Chelsea's fullbacks. And we can see that with the average positions on Chelsea's shape, how attacking both fullbacks are for Lampard and no balance in midfield was a bit of a concern for his Chelsea side. And United just exploited it in the evening, playing Anthony Martial and Dan James super high behind the fullbacks. Lampard would have learnt, Lampard would have rethought about the tactical side of the game. So with the likes of Ashley Cole coming into his coaching staff, Everton could be a decent side, but it's all to be seen. Guys, that has been the video. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Frank Lampard will be a success at Everton? I think it's going to be a tough one, but Donny van der Beek and Deli Alley have big potential, but it feels like he's got to go with one or the other and not put both in the side. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe to you. We'll see you later.